you all know me, I'm Dr. Jim Hyden, and I am your interim superintendent for a few short more months. Um, tonight, we're very excited to welcome all of you here um, to hear from our three candidates. Our first candidate tonight for the superintendent position will be Dr. Steve Walensky. And Steve will start off with a presentation of himself. Um, and after that, uh, I have um, at least one question if we have time for more. I have several others that I will also give him. We're going to use the questions. Uh, we will not have public input on this, but we do want your feedback on the card. So if you please um, give us some feedback on each of the candidates. All of that feedback will be compiled uh, tonight and tomorrow and will be delivered to the board so that the board has that as they're making the final decisions tomorrow night. So thank you and welcome. Dr. Lutsky, welcome. Good evening. Thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, I appreciate all of you giving up this beautiful evening to be here for what I think is a really important conversation. And I'm honored to have the opportunity to be one of the candidates for the Raymond School District Superintendent position. So a little bit about myself. Uh, there we go. All right, so uh, they asked me to share a little bit about me as a person, me as a educator and as a leader. And so on the first slide here, the large picture in the middle is what's most important to me, my wife and my son. Uh, I've been married to my wife uh, 32 years and uh, my son is 22 and just uh, finishing college this May and we're really proud of him and looking forward to watching him grow and develop uh, as an adult and hopefully as a dad and a and uh, you know a uh, husband uh, upper left is my dog and my cat you can't see the kitty too well but um, especially with the sun out of the house uh, the dog and the cat keep the nest from being empty and uh, give my wife and I both a lot of joy and happiness being able to uh, be parents to both of those critters and they were both uh, rescue animals that uh, we felt really good about being able to uh, bring them into our home. Bottom left, I'm a, I'm a person of faith. Um, religion's important to me and it helps ground me and helps to uh, get me through situations that are, you know, some, there's challenging things in personal and professional life and that um, belief and faith is a very important part of my life. Upper right corner, you can see a picture of a uh, blanket chest that I, I made um, when I'm not working or spending time with my wife and son or the dog or my faith. I like to get down into the workshop and uh, create things out of wood. Um, in addition to woodworking, I like to do bicycling, golf, some camping, um, enjoy a good movie and, and a concert and those kinds of things. So I try to be grounded and, and uh, balance my work life with my personal life. Bottom right, um, hopefully everybody here uh, echoes the, my uh, support for the Badgers and the Brewers and the Packers and the Bucks. I uh, like to cheer on those teams and um, every once in a while I get an opportunity to go to a game or whatnot and, uh, and it's another thing that I like to do in my free time. So uh, that's just a little about, about me as a person. Oops, now I, went, I got you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> as an educator, a uh, couple of pictures there and some text. Uh, when I graduated from UW Oshkosh in 1989, uh, the job market for teachers was polar opposite of what it is now. Um, too many teachers and not enough jobs. So my wife and I, who I met at Oshkosh, uh, we applied to teach in uh, Texas and were hired to teach in El Paso, which is right on the Rio Grande River. And uh, so we spent eight years down there and had just a wonderful experience. I taught uh, Texas history and U.S. history for the first six years and then uh, earned my master's degree in school administration from the University of Texas, El Paso, 
while we were down there. And I, my last two years, I was an assistant principal in a large uh, urban high school in El Paso. Over the time we spent there, uh, some things I learned about being an educator, and that's kind of the bullet points here on the slide, uh, importance of making sure all kids are successful. And the district I worked for was really uh, good at helping to us to understand all means all. All doesn't just mean the kids that come to my classroom or my school already ready to learn. A lot of kids come to us with baggage and, and aren't at the level they should be. And our job as educators and my job as the district administrator, superintendent, is to ensure that we are developing a program of learning that's going to help all kids be successful. And one of the ways of doing that is to personalize instruction uh, using data. Um, I'm, I think it's really important to uh, do a fall, winter, and spring assessment of student achievement to see where our kids are at and use that data to identify kids' strengths and growth areas and then personalize instruction to uh, hit on those growth areas for each individual student. Active engagement is another thing that I learned while I was down there that to make learning active and not passive. I don't want kids in my school sitting and getting. I want them to be hands-on, moving around, collaborating with their peers, and learning. And the four C's stand for creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. And those are things that I learned as a teacher that I bring as a district administrator and work with my staff to implement into the classroom. On the right-hand side, um, opportunities as an educator for significant professional development. Uh, learned uh, was, you know, learned, I was a teacher at the time when computers were first getting put into the classroom and had lots of opportunities to grow with the technology and uh, to learn how to use that as a, as a tool and as a support for kids. Uh, to differentiate, um, give kids of different levels and different interests, different opportunities for learning, uh, collaborative learning, multiple intelligences, authentic assessment, and data-driven instruction. So um, I mentioned that just briefly already, but I, I think it's real important that in a school we're developing our lessons and our learning based on the data we have about how students are achieving and that uh, is a big part of what I learned as an educator that I carry over into my role as a leader. And as a leader, a uh, couple things that I've added since I was a teacher and one of those is building community. I think it's of utmost importance for the school system to thrive, that it has to have a strong, positive community culture. And that starts with me as the superintendent, reaching out to different community groups and uh, organizations and bridging that relationship between the school district and the community. Uh, I, as a district leader, I'm very visible in the districts I've worked in. I'm present not only during the day in the hallways, cafeterias, greeting kids and families as they arrive in the morning and wishing them a good night when they leave, but being present at their activities, whether it be a ball game, a concert, a ceremony where they're uh, being recognized for achievement or whatnot. So. Uh, if I'm selected for this job, you would see me around a lot during the school day and evening, uh, participating in community events, whether it be um, someone shared that the fireworks are done here in school grounds, you know, that's something I really enjoy participating in, and it's an opportunity for me to uh, build those relationships with families and community. Uh, Growth as a leader, I uh, am still a learner. 
every day, and I make sure that throughout my school year and even summer uh, that I'm taking advantage of the learning opportunities available to me to um, evaluate my effectiveness as a district administrator or superintendent and um, adding skills to my toolbox so that I can help staff uh, be as successful as possible. And you can just kind of see a few pictures here, the, the larger one on the top. Um, currently, I'm interim district administrator in Evansville, and we um, I work with the uh, Becoming Better Neighbors group in, in Evansville to uh, host a Martin Luther King Day uh, activity in the school district. And uh, those are just some of the people that were part of that event. Uh, you can see in the lower left, um, was at a basketball game and the uh, Evansville's mascot is the Blue Devils and uh, we were able to uh, get a nice photo there. The lower middle picture, uh, my wife is the uh, daughter of, a, of her dad was a principal and her mom uh, took it upon herself to make sure that he was able to uh, show how much she appreciated staff. Um, she baked treats all the time and sent them to the school teacher lounge uh, with a nice little note of appreciation. And, and my wife has definitely followed suit. And so in every leadership role that I've been in, you know, all I have to do is say, hey, uh, honey, would you mind baking some goodies for me to take to school tomorrow to, you know, the teachers have been really working hard and I want to I wanna show support to them. And so uh, that's just one of the trays of goodies she made uh, for some of the Evansville staff this year. And then, as I mentioned already, the lower right um, is a uh, just a screenshot of a professional learning I participated in this year in, uh, uh, at the state education convention, talking about the importance of leadership and, and whatnot. So um, that's just a little bit about me as a, as a person and as an educator and a leader. Oh, I suppose uh, that last one was uh, just slide one of leadership. So uh, slide two, um, you know, as a leader, I like to be uh, make sure that I'm supporting and challenging our educators. It's important that we set high goals, but then I need to, as the leader, provide support to the staff so that we can achieve those goals. And I do that through uh, providing encouragement, uh, nurturing, our staff, um, you know, sometimes they need emotional support and, and help, and I'm there to provide that. And then also, um, I want to do a lot more listening to talking and uh, make sure that I understand the, uh, the where the district is at from a variety of different perspectives. Um, and while listening, I'm, I'm doing a lot of learning. And then once that I, I have a good understanding of what uh, type of situation we're in, then I can start providing leadership. And uh, a couple of specific things that I do in my role as a superintendent is help coach our, our building level administration and district level administration to be more effective in helping to grow our teaching staff. And I've participated in some professional development in that regard where they, they help me and the other superintendents um, become better at coaching our, our building level and district level leadership. And the upper right um, chart there that you see uh, is a reference to educator of effectiveness and the importance of um, making sure that we're um, getting into the classrooms and doing observations of our staff and then providing quality feedback about what we observe and having a collaborative conversation about how we can um, grow and, and develop the areas that might have been identified for, for growth. So I think that was the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Lutzky. <clears throat> so um, can you tell us what it is about the Raymond School that led you to apply for this position, and what do you feel you have to offer our district? 
Sure, that's a that's a really good question. Uh, for I'd say half of my career as a leader, I've been working in small, yeah, I'd say small rural school districts, and I've really grown to love the environment in rural communities. The I live right now in a uh, in Orfordville, Wisconsin, which is near Janesville, and the population is I think just a little over a thousand. The Parkview District, where I spent a lot of my career, is about 800 kids. So it's a little bigger than Raymond, but it's a K-12 district. So, you know, K-8, it's probably about exactly the same size as the Raymond district. Uh, my teaching career was in middle school, teaching seventh and eighth grade. And uh, I originally saw myself as a high school guy. Uh, but got offered a middle school position and accepted that, and that was just a real blessing. I've really learned to love the sense of humor and the and the just the wit and charm of adolescence. And I always say, if I ever were to go back into a classroom, I'd be teaching sixth through eighth grade because they're, they're just a lot of fun to work with. Most of the rest of my career also included working with elementary kids. Uh, as a district administrator, my office has usually been in the elementary school. And so I had lots of opportunities to interact and engage with elementary age kids. And, and they're a breath of fresh air as well. And I just love seeing their learning and getting to interact with them and, and help them grow and develop as learners. Um, small school environment. I had the opportunity in Texas to work in a very large high school. Um, it was a nice experience, but it was hard to get a good, strong relationship with either the staff or the students because of the large size of the district. Uh, when I reviewing the Raven School District, I was impressed with the uh, state report card score and uh, achieving exceeding expectations almost each year. But I also see the opportunity to come in and work with the staff to get us to the significantly exceeds level. Uh, we're real close, and I think I have tools that I could uh, share with uh, Raymond to help us get to that level. And then the other thing that I noticed when I was researching the district is just the community connection uh, and family connection. And a couple things jumped out that uh, I thought were just really awesome. And, uh, the senior breakfast that you that the school district uh, puts on to uh, develop a relationship with our our senior community members the father-daughter dance i thought was an uh, awesome idea and i've done similar things in some of the districts that i've worked in and then uh, just the, the involvement of the pto i think many times a strong pto is an uh, indicator of a strong school district and then what do i feel i can offer the district I'm an effect, I'm, I think I'm very effective at building and growing relationships um, in the districts that I've worked in. I've received a lot of positive feedback about, from teachers, parents, and community about um, the visibility, the making time to connect and communicate with them, and the, the, just the frequency of feedback that I provide to the different stakeholders has been very appreciated. Uh, I get actively involved in the communities where I, I work. Um, a couple examples, uh, in Orfordville, I, I was on the Lions Club, um, helped with facility planning. They do a summer festival, a winter carnival, and those kinds of things. And I get involved, um, not only in planning, but in volunteering and being present and visible at those things. And then uh, one of the pictures I showed of our Martin Luther King Day uh, activity, uh, in my current role in Evansville, um, I've been an active part of the Becoming Better Neighbors group, which is a uh, broad coalition of community, school district, business leaders that have a goal of making Evansville a stronger, more positive place for all. Uh, in addition, that high degree of knowledge and understanding of curriculum and instruction, being a rural district leader, I've had uh, any opportunities to uh, help and be involved in um, planning and developing curriculum instruction. Uh, I have a strong 
understanding and knowledge of using data to drive instruction and to develop instruction. Um, I'm an advocate for student and staff emotional wellness, and I think it's important that as the superintendent make opportunities available not only for the students but for the staff to learn and grow and, and develop strategies for um, being strong emotionally. Uh, financial and facility planning. Um, again, being a small district leader, uh, Parkview did have a business manager, but uh, in those roles, there's lots of turnover as uh, business managers uh, move up in the ranks to bigger districts that pay better. Um, so I had to mentor and coach a few of them during my time at Parkview. And uh, a few times we had gaps in business management and, and had to, I had to step in and, and perform those duties as the district administrator. Uh, facility planning, been part of referenda to uh, uh, for facility uh, upgrades, uh, help develop long range uh, facility plans and also uh, in creating a fund 46, which is a uh, account school districts can create to uh, deposit funds that is available to be used for facility projects. Uh, school law and policy development, um, lots of experience in both of those areas. Uh, just as you know, 16 years as a district administrator, you have lots of different legal issues come up that you learn how to handle and also participate in quite a few legal conferences to uh, get updates and news about new laws and regulations. Policies had to help Parkview uh, basically redo all their policies from the from the ground up. When I started in 07, many of them were still um, generated from a typewriter and you know were 30, 40 years old and in dire need of upgrades. So worked with the policy committee and uh, some legal counsel on a lot of those policies to get the district up to date on all the different required policies. Just a couple more things. Um, I think in anybody I've worked with over the years, whether it was as a teacher or a principal or as a, a superintendent, you'd hear from them that I'm a strong team player, I'm a collaborator, I'm a mentor, and I'm a coach. So each of those things is critical to being a successful leader. Sometimes you need to emphasize one of them more than the other. And I think I've developed a strong ability to, to identify which of those roles is most important and when. And then um, just lastly, um, my philosophy, not only as an educator, but as a parent and, and uh, whatnot, um, and learned a lot of this from my, my parents, because I believe in uh, teaching staff to fish instead of giving them fish. I want them to be able to figure out on their own how to excel and achieve. And my job is to give them the tools and the training so that they're able to catch their own fish and I'm, that I don't have to, to be providing that for them all the time. And so that's a little bit about why, I, why I'm sitting here in front of you uh, and what I feel I can offer the Raymond School District. Thank you, Dr. Lutsky. We have about five minutes, and I have one more quick question for you. Sure. How will you get to know the community? I think I would get to know them uh, by attending the activities in the area. Um, so if the, I mentioned the 4th of July event, you'd see me at that. Um, if there are other, you know, I'll be here, you know, a lot. And so uh, visiting a restaurant, you know, I know it's a rural area, but there are a few places to visit and hang out. and and finding out those places where people congregate and spending some time there. Um, you'd see messages from me on social media from the district to uh, get information out to them with invitations to connect with me. Um, periodically, I like to send out um, things in the mail with information about the district and information about the superintendent so that those that are on social media have an opportunity to see me. Um, but I'd also be reaching out to staff and, 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 you know, as I mentioned a little while ago, listening and learning, I'd, I'd be asking, you know, what, what are the different groups? Do we have any Lions clubs or civic organizations or, or you know, do the, do the seniors go and drink coffee somewhere where I can go and make a connection? Um, 
and those would be the places that I would frequent throughout um, my time so that I can um, reach as many people as possible. Well, thank you, sir. <clears throat> and that will conclude this portion. And our next candidate will be on at 6.15. So please take a moment to fill out the cards. And you can wait until the end and you can deposit them or you can drop them up whenever you're ready. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Well, really? Well, nobody's in the front, I know this right away, so nobody, <laughs> that's all right. Um, I'll, I'll turn the microphone on so the live stream can hear me. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mr. David Newman, about to be Dr. Newman. Yeah, you, are, you are Dr. Newman, never mind. He is also a doctor. I apologize for that. Thank you very much, David, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Dr. Hyden. As Jim said, Dave Newman, I, I go by Dave, but certainly all my documents say David. Um, I want to honor the name that my parents gave me. Thanks for being here. It's beautiful, one of the most beautiful days that we've had in a long time. And so that you're taking the time to be here to listen to the candidates speaks to your commitment to Raymond. And I am appreciative of that support that you're taking the time to hear more about me. I'm just not sure where, so the screens are there. I will begin. So a little bit about me, that's, uh, I love being around kids. Um, I love being, I love that about Raymond that I will be, I would be around kids all the time. So whenever I go outside, particularly with the kindergarten and first graders, they are on me about going down the slide. And so it, it's, it's fun for me. It's fun for them. And so I had a recess supervisor one time then when she saw me going down, she took a picture of it. Um, Cause it's all about having fun with kids and um, it, it helps me to have fun and stay young. And um, 
helps me to be somebody that connects with them. So going down the slide always attracts a great deal of attention. Um, you can see that child up in the top, and I bet there are six or seven more behind him waiting to go down the slide. So that's why I chose that picture. Okay. My family, um, I have two daughters, Adela, who is 15 and a sophomore, Mariana, who will be um, 12 later in the week, and she's a sixth grader. We have a mighty cocker spaniel named Thor, and then our family is big into snowmobiling. And so that picture, certainly something of us doing what we love to do the most. Uh, but it's also Adela's first time riding her snowmobile by herself. And we did a 100 mile trip that day. And so when I look at that picture, that's not just us being together as a family, but that was a day that's is a very special one for me. Um, you'll notice that the first picture we're by a Christmas tree, like we take pictures besides the winter time um, I have two cats, too, but they don't go outside, so I don't have any snow pictures. So they didn't make the cut with this thing. But um, we just have an amazing supporting family. We're also very involved in our church. I've been the administrative council chair for the last almost two years. And I've been a member of the trustees committee for over two years. And so our faith is really important to our family. How to start with the 2-2 picture. So at the elementary level, um, days that are 22nd are big deals. And so um, early on at Jefferson, but I've done it in other schools, they asked me to wear a 2-2 for the 22nd of whatever that month was. So we got to have fun with that. You know, it wasn't my favorite picture to get taken in that moment, but it's fun to share today because I hope it it um, emphasizes to you my commitment to being a little bit silly um, to support kids and to be a part of their lives and to relate to them. The other one, we just a uh, Subaru partnered with our school. And so we had some kids that wrote thank you notes to them and had Subaru come out and present a donation. So that's what that picture is. So, sir. Uh, but, so the presentation about me as an educator, me as a leader, and so as an educator, I want people to know that I'm caring, that I'm passionate about learning, and that I'm a relationship builder. These certainly, these skills certainly transfer to be a leader also. But what I want you to know, what I want the board to know, is that I'm an educator first. And so in my role, I see students in my office that sometimes make choices in the heat of the moment that um, aren't the preferred choice. So I approach it just the same way you would approach it with your own children, is what happened? How can we do things differently next time? What are you going to do when you're in that situation again? Because you'll be in that situation again. And giving them some strategies to address it when they get to that point. Now, just like our own kids, it doesn't always take the first time. That's okay, that's, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm supposed to be doing is to help kids be successful. In my role as principal, it's not about making sure that kids are punished, you know, that, well, you know the, the rules, and so it's, it's a learning opportunity. Same thing goes with teachers, too. If there's a concern in the classroom, whether it's behavior, whether it's academic, we work together. We're collaborative. I don't know if that jumped to the other slide or not, but we're collaborative. Um, I want to know what they're seeing, what their perspective is. I'll share what suggestions I have, and we work together on it. It's not about, you know, the principal coming in or, in this case, the district administrator. Here's what you should do and then, you know, walk away. It's a team effort because our success is linked to each other. That's, that's why I'm as an educator. I want to make sure that we're all successful. Same goes with this community right here, the people that are here and outside that aren't able to be here. My job is to educate you on the big pictures, the things that are happening in the district, to educate the board, and to keep you in the loop. Talk about building transparency and building trust in a couple more slides, but that's how I view myself as being an educator in this role. Did you need to move in? That's good. Yeah, that's where I want to be right now. All right. So moving into that, the leader portion who I am, it's, it's being collaborative. And, being that relationship builder that I talked about as an educator, those are really when they come together. Um, being results-oriented and data-driven, 
and being that culture and team builder. So I'll share with you being collaborative to me means that I'm listening to those different perspectives. I'm learning what I don't know. And having that relationship, I hope affords me the opportunity to share with you things that you may not know, whether it's a teacher, whether it's community, a board, so that we can all understand each other's perspectives because we all have a unique perspective that if we don't listen to it, we're not able to get the best outcome. So over the years, it's certainly something that I've learned to enhance and become better at um, and not assume some things. Am, am I doing this, Jim? I, I am doing, doing it. It's, it's kind of my business. All right. right. Well, I'm just glad I'm not doing some. You're not doing anything wrong. I'm sorry. Results oriented and data driven. What I mean by that is, you know, whether we're working on building a positive school culture, whether we're working at raising reading and math scores, it starts with what data do we have and what do we want to see as an improvement, and then using metrics to determine what what success will look like. As, as an educator, as somebody that works closely with teachers, it's not always as easy as we might think in bracing achievement three points. What I'm really focused on, what I believe in is we have a process and we're sticking with the process to reach that goal. So there's times where we will not reach our goal in, in my current assignment, but I can explain to the board, I can explain to the superintendent, we didn't make the goal, but here's the steps that we took and they're solid and our teachers are working really hard to make it. I stand by the efforts that they've made. Because when you work with kids, when you're really focused on something, you learn things along the way that you don't anticipate. So when I talk about results oriented and data driven, well, that's part of it, but I'm, I'm also a human too. And we're working with humans, so we have to be adjusted. It's not all about that number, but we certainly strive for that number. And then culture and team builder, we'll, I'll talk more about that in some of the questions, but certainly having a strong culture, a positive culture is key to our success. It takes all of us. It's not just the superintendent, it's not just the principal. We all have a, a say in culture and we all have part of it. And so I'm committed to that. I have strategies that involve everybody and how we can promote that. So, Maybe this one you might There we go. Yes. Right. Sorry, I wasn't the right one. That was the last one. So who am I as the right candidate? When I presented this to the board, I wanted to make sure that I got this in, and so some of it may overlap. Um, forgive me, but I want you to know this: that I listen to people. I admit when I'm wrong. I don't blame other people. It's my mistake. You'll hear me say that's my mistake and you'll see me strive to not make that mistake again. I hold myself to a very high standard. I don't like when I don't make that standard. Um, sometimes that happens. I'm committed to building trust because I believe that without trust, we're not going to get anywhere. You're not gonna believe anything that I say, no matter what my efforts are to build transparency, you're not going to believe it if we don't have that trust. I build that trust by creating relationships with you, being visible, being at different events, being approachable and approaching you. So those are key core values of mine. It's what I'm committed to work on. And when I did my homework with Raymond, I see that those are things that are very important to the Raymond community. Trust, transparency, relationships. So I know going in that that's important and you can know that I'm committed to that. That's top priority for me. We'll also share in a moment, I believe everything that I've done in my career has led me to this spot right now. And what I mean by that is when I talk about some culture and what attracted me to Raymond, I hope that you see that uh, it's not, I don't think it'll be typical what you hear from me tonight than what you've heard from other candidates. And if you did, then I'm way off in that assumption, but I don't think so based on what I'll share in a moment. I believe that Raymond needs a healer right now. I think that Dr. Hyden's done an amazing job from what I've heard, what I've talked to people today, um, and I can continue that work also. Those are the, I don't want to repeat some of the same things, so I think with the next questions that I'll be able to go in more detail of what was originally on the slide. 
thank you, and I do apologize for the technological um, technology issues as usual. Well, I'm slightly. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, Dave, what is it about the Raymond School District that led you to apply for this position, and what do you feel you have to offer the district? I'm going to divide that in two parts. I'm going to start with what led me to apply to Raymond. And I'm going to do like a little David Letterman countdown backwards, but I won't start from 10. I'll start from three. The, the top three. So the third one was it's K-8 school. Uh, I'm a believer in a K-8 system. And why I'm a believer in that? Because as a, a pre-K through fifth grade educator, my most of my career, we work really hard those six, seven, sometimes eight years when we have early childhood and building relationships with families, building relationships with kids, knowing what they need and supporting them in their education. And then they go to sixth grade and we lose all of that. And most kids adapt really well to that, but we can look at data that shows that not all kids do. So to have an opportunity in which we're not sending kids away after fifth grade is very exciting to me. Um, second, the number two is I'm a Racine County resident. I live in uh, the town of, I drew a blank. I drew a blank. I'm thinking of Yorkville. No, uh, Rochester, sorry about that. And I really truly want to give back to my community. Racine County is my community. I'm giving back in jury duty in a couple of weeks. So if you have jury duty in two weeks, you may see me there, but that's, that's part of it. I love where I work now. I'm proud to be working in the school district of Janesville, but I really want to take my talents and expertise and be closer to my community. The, the number one reason I'm here is last fall when I was watching the news and I saw that there was a great deal of turmoil going on in Raymond. It, it broke my heart. It broke my heart for the kids for the staff, for the, the community, and for the school board. No educator wants to see that happen in any school. So as I watched that unfold, my, certainly my prayers and thoughts were with Raymond. I didn't know that this would be an opportunity, but that's, that's what cemented Raymond in my mind. Then when Dr. Garvey resigned in December-ish, I, I didn't expect that. But, oh, well, Raymond maybe opening up. I have the utmost respect for Dr. Hyden. Uh, when I was in South Milwaukee, he was in Cudahy, and well, most South, I won't say that, but there's a rivalry <laughs> between South Milwaukee and Cudahy. I'll say that. So, um, but there's a great deal of respect for Dr. Hyden in South Milwaukee also. And so when I saw that he was selected as an interim, that made me feel good about this position because of his expertise and his skills, and he's a healer also. Uh, that's really what led me to decide I'm going to start gathering my materials, my letters to apply for this. And it's that's hard to do that. It's hard to tell people that I enjoy working with, my supervisors, that I'm looking somewhere else. But it's not because I'm trying to get out. It's because I really feel a calling to Raymond based on the things that I've done in my current role. Jim, would you mind repeating the second? No, part? absolutely not. And what do you feel that you have to offer to the district, Dave? So part of, so one of the things is I have a, a strong base of knowledge and expertise in pre-K through fifth grade education. So I know we go up to eighth, but certainly I understand that age level. I understand the challenges that teachers face. I understand the, the curriculum and the standards. I did teach sixth grade for a period of time, a long time ago. Um, I enjoyed that time as a sixth grade teacher. I was an assistant principal at middle school. I enjoyed that time. But my current goals at that time were to be an elementary principal. I've certainly been successful in that and enjoyed, enjoyed that a great deal. I have things to learn, of course. I will be the first to admit it. But I also believe that that expertise of what goes on at K-5 will help me to better understand the connections that we have in the middle of The other piece that I have to offer is that experience in building a positive school culture. So when I alluded to what drew me to Raymond, 
in my current role, we had a culture issue when I started that had been existed for a long period of time, 10 plus years. And it was, it was a surprise to me at first, but I, we tackled it together. And so I have the skills and I have the experience of how to deal with difficult divided cultures, I'll call it. Because when I looked at the survey data, it talked about a divided culture. And I believe that through being transparent, through collecting, we use survey data, uh, both previous data that was there before I came on board. And then once I was on board, we did a survey that reflected solely on me. We shared all of that. It was very transparent. Uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't all sunshine and roses, I'll tell you that. But it, it helped everyone get on the same page about what everyone in the school was feeling. So I, I plan to do something very similar with, with Raymond, uh, how we can use that data, work together. I can create some goals. The success I believe that we've had is that we use that data. Everyone was able to see what people's responses were along the way. So in the end, when the goals were created, it was pretty clear to see why those goals were created. And we continue to work on that, just like we would continue to work on that at Raymond. We do a survey now called the Gallup Q12 that measures staff engagement. And we use, the way we do this now currently is we have a building leadership team that also works with me on the survey. They present it to the staff also. And we disaggregate the data. We're creating a school goal together. We also have subgroups of people that, you know, they took it under their subgroup, let's say special education. And so they're looking at their own data. How can they improve in their area? Because that contributes to the whole school. So I believe that that experience, as I told the staff four years ago, I, I wouldn't have had that, that expertise. And four years ago, I don't know if that would have attracted me to Raymond because I just didn't have that skill set developed. There's one more. What can I offer? I, I think it's it, it's that opportunity to build trust, to be transparent. I, as I said before, I'm a Racine County resident. Uh, this is the only active application I have. This is the only district that I've applied for um, that I'm active in. I've applied in the past. And there was one point before I went to Janesville, I was applying all of the state. I wanted that district administrator position so badly. Um, I'm more selective now. And so if this, if I'm not chosen to be the candidate to lead us forward here, that's okay. I'll go back to Janesville. I'm very happy with the role that I have there. I continue to do great things with the great people that I get to work with. Certainly, I, I hope that I'm selected and let them stay. And it's not a stepping stone for me. I was telling the teachers too, and maybe I said at the beginning, I love that I can be around kids every day. You see those pictures, that, um, that's a core value of mine. So this appeals to me. I don't want to go somewhere where I'm in an office where I don't get to see kids every day. So those are, that's what I believe that I offer people. Thank you. How do you get to know the community? Well, it's, I'll talk to the board tonight about my entry plan, but it's it's about opportunities to connect with the community in some listening sessions so that I get to know more about what the strengths are, what the challenges are, what you'd like to see different at Raymond, what you'd like to see me initiate at Raymond. Um, I, I, I saw today in my tour just the amazing things the PTO is doing. I saw some things on the website too, but I'll be involved in those events. I see the Raymond Community and Business Organization does things at school too. You'll see me there. Remember when I talked about being approachable? That's all well and good, but I'm going to approach you too. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to ask you some things. If, uh, and I hope that you're willing to share so that I can learn from you. I can use that lens and allow me to be a better reader for Raymond. So school events, it's helps that I'm 20 minutes away so that it's easy for me to be here and, and involved in that. I'm hungry for those opportunities. And you'll see. Okay.
Anything else you'd like to offer? Again, thanks for being here. I appreciate your commitment to your thanks for listening. All right, and our next candidate will be here at 6.45, so we'll have a slight break. Thanks very much, please, to uh, give us your feedback on the candidates. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Thank you, I'm on So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're a little bit ahead of ourselves, but um, Mr. Leach was available, so I'd like to take a second to introduce Mike Leach. Um, and Mike uh, will do his presentation, and then we'll have an opportunity for a couple of questions. Welcome, right. Mr. Leach. Can you hear me okay? Yep. This isn't playing in the room, though, this is just playing on the board. Yes, sir. No, it's in the room. 
so I should speak louder. You can hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Leach. I, I may stand up at some point because I'm not a sitter talker, but that's okay. I uh, just wanted to take some time to get to know the community a little bit here in Raymond. Really excited at the opportunity to tell you about myself uh, and my background and experiences in education and uh, hopefully have an opportunity to, to hear a little bit from you. So uh, we'll get started here. A little bit about me. Uh, there I am. Uh, I am an educator. Uh, well, first, first of all, I'm a husband, father, teacher, coach, all those things. I'm also a leader. Um, I have three amazing kids uh, that I'll tell you about in a little bit. I am married to a very patient woman. Uh, she's a second career teacher. Uh, her name is Barb. She's a second grade teacher in the Sussex Hamilton School District, uh, where my kids go to school as well. So um, I've had the pleasure of working in schools for 23 years, uh, most of which, now I look back on it, it just means I'm getting old, but uh, has been as an administrator of some kind. Uh, got a variety of levels that I've had experiences in, and I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, as, as the slideshow would go on. I currently am working in a blended position with Wisconsin Virtual Learning, as well as Ozaki High School. So uh, that's been the last seven years with Wisconsin Virtual Learning, and the last five with both Wisconsin Virtual Learning and Ozaki High School. So it's sort of a 50-50 job in it now. It serves about, uh, about 700 students uh, in the, the greater Wisconsin area, 400 of which are virtual all over the state, and about 200 of which are, 250 of which are in uh, the brick and mortar high school, which is a 9 through 12 uh, up in Ozaki in Fredonia. Uh, Fredonia is a very similar community to Franceville in this area. Uh, it's a great place to, to raise a family, and it's a small town school. I, I love everything about it and, and the culture and community that, that, it's, that it's in. My personal mission here is really to, to make the world a little better than when I got here. Um, I just want to, to find ways to improve the experiences we have in our schools and in your, in your children's lives. Um, as well as try and help you know to, to move this place to, to new levels. Every place I've been, I try to leave a little better than what I got there. Um, I also mentioned uh, I, I work on a board, with a couple different boards, volunteer boards, with uh, Little League for my kids, because apparently I can't say no, and so I can Little League uh, work, as well as uh, Boy Scouts. My 18-year-old is officially an Eagle Scout. In fact, happy birthday, Mikey. Today is his birthday. So um, he understands Dad had a meeting tonight, but that happens sometimes. The reality is he's 18 and he's now an Eagle Scout as of Friday, which is great. Nothing like waiting until the last minute to turn your paperwork in, which is what he did. So uh, even my kids do that as well. But um, again, that's a little bit about me, a uh, little bit about uh, my kids. So I, these are my kids, my little learners. The way that I kind of lead and, and see things is if it's good enough for my family, then it's good enough for yours. So in other words, I, I take care and compassion with everything I do. You send us your best and brightest, and you want the best for your kids. One thing, regardless of where you walk in life, everybody wants better for their kids than they have. And what I'm excited about is the opportunity to, to provide some things that can do that for you. Um, on the left, you see Paige. Uh, Paige is 15. She's my freshman. I give you two pictures of Paige because I realize there's the school page, which is the young lady standing at attention. And then there's the parking lot page, which is the one you get at the end of the day it's sassy and punchy. Uh, the gets in the car and complains about everything. Uh, so she's my freshman. And then I have Mikey, who uh, I got to change the age officially now as of today. He's now 18. Thank you very much. Uh, he doesn't know it all, even though he tells me he does. Uh, but he's the handsome fellow with the great hair. Uh, and then Henry is four. And I can tell you, he's awesome. Uh, that happened to us as a family. And here we sit with energy and charisma and love. And it's been amazing. They all have their mom's hair. They don't have my hairline, thankfully for them. Uh, great curls, but super proud of them. And uh, they're my world, really, just like your kids are your world. And so our worlds hopefully will collide here soon enough. Uh, this summer, this is just a little taste of what I experienced, but I love to get around and travel whenever I can. Uh, I always encourage families. I know vacations are funny because kids will say, oh, I'm on vacation. Can I miss some school? Absolutely. Obviously, we're not going to make up all your work and give you a packet for every day you're missing, but you, you need to travel with your kids and enjoy that family time. Um, it does get taxing in the car. If you look, there's a lot of, uh, we're packed in that car, a little picture there on a road trip, uh, but we survived and headed out to Washington, D.C., uh, New York City, and then my family's from New Jersey, 
the Jersey Shore. Of course, yeah, you know, get your Jersey Shore time in, of course. But that was last summer. And then my dad turned 70, so he decided to go river rafting. Let that sit in just for one minute. I'm not sure why my 70 year old father wanted to go river rafting, but we did. And so we did that, and that was a lot of fun. So, again, any chance you get to do fun things with the family is, is a great, great way to live. A little bit about me and my background. Uh, I'm a teacher, a learner, and a leader. Um, I am wired for this. People ask, you know, later in life, you know, what would you do if you didn't do this? Uh, I don't know, uh, to be honest. I've only done this. And so I've been, you know, whether it was a coach as a young student, um, as a student and a student teacher in college, uh, all the way up through paraprofessional while I was in college in special education. I taught uh, third grade in Milwaukee Public Schools for my field work and student teaching in the year after that, and then fourth grade uh, teaching experience when I was in the classroom. And then I moved on to elementary principaling. Um, I've been a principal of an elementary school for about 10 of my years as an administrator. Uh, middle level, I've been a middle school principal at a STEM school uh, and other uh, middle schools you know, experiences that I have uh, really have, have shaped out, rounded out that K-8 experience. Um, and then I have high school experience, 9 through 12, in my current role um, as a high school principal for the past five years. And so all together, it sort of all encompasses, um, I run a K-4 through 12th grade virtual school. And so as executive director and principal of that school, uh, I've taken on the roles of sort of a small district uh, superintendent for the executive director function. We have about a $3.6 million budget. All the staffing, all the policies, all the boardsmanship is done with my relationship with the school board uh, through the WEL job at this current time. So that's a little bit about me uh, and, and where I've been. Uh, I think this really aligns nicely with the fact that uh, I've been in the shoes of the people we'd be, we'd be working with and serving, both the students and the staff and the families. So I, I definitely can, can uh, relate to the needs of what's going on here. I believe uh, in the power of relationships. Relationships are critical. It's not just about me being the new guy and feeling like I have to talk with you and get to know you, but being there, being consistent, being available, uh, being a listener, those are all important things. The culture here uh, that I want to build is one of, of you know, creativity, creativity, innovation, problem solving, and empowering people. We need people to feel like they're empowered and they can, they can control their own destiny as to how good we get. And we, we don't even know our own potential right now. I think we've got some planning to do, and some, I'll talk about strategic planning a little bit. But the reality is, I believe uh, in, in the Howard Behar, former CFO of, of Starbucks, that uh, the, the people who sweep the floors need to pick the broom. So in other words, you, you talk to your people, you find out what they need, and you support them and give them what they need to do the job the best they can. And I find that most people I've been blessed to work with over the years do a great job of that. There are times when it doesn't go so well and we have to reboot and retool and, and, and restart. But uh, overall, I've been really lucky that the relationships and trust that I've, that I've built with people helps us to propel things forward. Um, I see leadership as really my ability to influence others to achieve a common goal. I think we're losing. <laughs> my leadership is blackout. <laughs> It is me. I am jinx when it comes to technology. That's all right. All right. Um, if you can't tell, I, I, I'm, I'm a communicator. I do enjoy talking to people. I enjoy being, uh, you know, by any means necessary. People have to know what's going on. They deserve to know what's going on. Your community deserves to feel like you're in the know. I do this by any and all means necessary. Uh, we don't judge. The way you receive the information is up to you. We'll provide it in a variety of ways. So I do uh, video recordings. I'll do some walk and learns, walk and talks. We'll post on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel for the WBL families uh, that I do my monthly newsletter on, my principal snippet. Um, we have, uh, I'll drop notes from classroom visits for teachers that's informal. Hey, thanks for letting me see you teach today. I really had a lot of fun watching our kindergartners work on their vowel sounds or whatever it may be, right? The feedback, the immediate pay in the moment deserves to be left on their desk, not left scratching their head thinking, why'd he come in here? What's that all about? So whether it's teachers and notes from classroom visits or uh, staff that get a, a Mike's Minute uh, that every Monday is auto scheduled to go out with what's going on in the school and how things are going on and meetings that are scheduled. Those are all pieces that are really important to have out. So staff feel like they know what's going on 
and they have a clue as to what, uh, what we're working on. Additionally, uh, we have s'mores. Uh, we use electronic newsletters, um, email blasts, text messaging. We use the Remind app in, in, uh, in WVL, which is a great way to blast out information via text message from teachers to students. So I think it's really important that we hit people with all different types of communication because you never know how they like to receive that information. We also want to make sure the information is consistent with whatever modality you're using. You want to make sure it's consistent across the board. So the other thing we do is if you want to talk, we schedule an appointment, we talk. Uh, you can drop in and there's a good chance that I'll talk with you in the moment, but if I can't, we schedule something pretty closely to that time. We have a conversation and, and we move on. Um, one of the other things I like to do with whenever I have an important conversation with a family, I like to create a feedback loop. And that feedback loop consists of we talk about the issue and then um, we come to some sort of resolution, hopefully. And then about two weeks later, I try to reach back out to the family and say, hey, listen, we talked a couple of weeks ago about important something important. And how are you doing with that? How's that been since? And that kind of follow up customer service, I think, was a long way. So I think hitting everybody with a variety of, of modalities for communication is really really important. I should advance. Oh, that's an example of my video. If you click on that, I start talking to you. Uh, I was at a tubing hill a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we were tubing at the uh, Sunburst Ski Hill with uh, with our virtual school, and so I was able to go out and do a couple of runs and not and not hurt myself, which was a lot of fun. Uh, visibility is really important. Uh, I believe that actions speak louder than words. I need to be out there. I need to be. Uh, available and, and at events, you know, for me right now, uh, I go to a high school football game. That's where I get all of my contact. It's not hard on a Friday night. We don't have that here, but we do have baseball, and I hear that baseball is important in the community. Um, so maybe some baseball games. The reality is, I need to be around, be responsive, and be here and available to you so that you understand, you know, where we are with things. I want to celebrate the great things that we're doing here. And I just, in my short time of visiting today, there's a lot of really great things that are going on here that I believe we can capture and celebrate, you know, out there and, and get that message to be the right message. I also believe that we control our message, meaning if we don't tell the story, someone will. And so it's our responsibility to tell the story and, and own the story for, for where it needs to be for us, because all the great things are resulting here. Why not push it out to the world and, and know what that message is and make it clear for our, for our people? Uh, promise small, deliver big. I don't like to oversell. I'm not a salesman here. I am an advocate. I am someone who is representing the district, and I want this district to be the best that it can be. So I try to promise small, deliver big. Hey, we'll try and get this accomplished by the end of the week, and then we accomplish it by Tuesday. And people go, oh, that, that got taken care of. Thank you. Um, I don't believe in saying, yeah, we'll talk about it, and then we forget about it, and three weeks later, three months later, nothing got done. To me, there's no good in that, because that just that just uh, causes issues and miscommunications, and then in the absence of information, people fill in the gaps. So I think we have to really make sure we, we do a good job doing what you say you're going to do. I know it sounds really simple, but it goes back to that. Um, celebrating students and staff, the people who are part of the work need to be a part of the message, and so... Everybody needs to know that we're all rolling the boat in the same direction, and this is how we're going to get from point A to point B in, in, in a better place. I'm a learner. Um, I started off my undergraduate at UW Milwaukee, uh, where, and then I went to Cardinal Stritch for my superintendent's license and my master's. I have a master's in educational leadership from Cardinal Stritch. Uh, anyone that watched the news last year knows that Cardinal Stritch closed, which was not cool especially because I'm currently a doctoral student there. Uh, and so now I'm at Tiffin University, which is in Ohio. Um, no, I, I don't drive to Ohio much, but it's online. And I'm hoping to finish my dissertation here in the next couple, coming uh, semester, because that's where I am in my writing, uh, chapter three of my dissertation. So look forward to having my uh, global leadership and change doctoral uh, certification here soon, my doctorate. So that'll be part of my journey as well. I also never stop learning on behalf of our staff. This, these are some pictures. One of my faculty members in the brick and mortar is a current active Air Force, um, member of the Air Force. And just down here at the refueling wing, uh, last summer I was part of this opportunity to watch, be a part of the refueling, which was my top gun moment, really. Um, I'm kind of like Maverick, except, you know, a little bit heavier. But the reality is uh, my Maverick moment was, was on the plane here when I got to watch the refueling and be a part of this. Why do I share this? because this was my way of supporting him. 
I needed to understand what it meant to be a reservist, what it meant to be a person who's active military, and the fact that this is what he does when he's not with us. So that when someone says, hey, where is that teacher? Well, he's not here because he's out for a week of training with our military. And this is what he does. In fact, let me show you some pictures. Because again, that builds trust. It builds that we know what's going on. We know where our people are. And the way to support our people is by getting to know what they need and how they, how they do things. So that's a totally outside of school thing, which was really cool and uh, was my top gun motive. What are my beliefs? Um, I believe that uh, culture is one of the strongest things in the school. And in the culture in any organization is going to trump the structure every time. In other words, if I come in here as a heavy hand and I say, we're doing X, Y, Z, that's only going to go so far. That culture is going to push back. You're going to see the resistance. You're not going to get the change you're looking for. I'm looking to build the assets and build the people in the organization to be better and do better. I need to find those values and align that values within our organization, talking about some mission work and making sure that we are aligned in what we're setting, setting out to do with students every single day. Uh, I believe that every single person has students and adults, has skills, has talent, has value. Um, it doesn't always come out in the best ways, but I, I've never sat down with a student that I couldn't talk to and figure out, hey, you know, where are you going? What are you doing? And, and how can we help you get there? Uh, and, and believe it or not, kids kids can come to that conversation pretty easily. Uh, communities need to have trust. I believe that I need to assess, enhance, reestablish the trust in any community coming in. I'm the new guy. And so uh, I, I represent, again, advocacy and improvement and trying to make things better here uh, for the organization. I believe that systems have a responsibility to react and improve. So the concept of continuous improvement is one that, that I um, – I, will, I always seek to engage in. Um, currently, I'm examining through all my dissertation the work around continuous school improvement to improve graduation rate in virtual school. And so I, I, we were able to make some really great gains. Uh, success builds on success. In the virtual school, I've been there seven years. When I took over, we had a 46% graduation rate. Less than half of our kids graduated high school. That's unacceptable. We're now at 92%. So we've doubled the graduation rate in seven years. Why? Not because I showed up. I'd love to think it's because, you know, hey, but the people did the work and the students and families did the work and we just aligned our vision and we talked about what we had to do and we, we hired the right people and we brought the right people into the conversations and the achievement started to happen. And when the achievement happened, more achievement happens because the success begets success. So I think here there's just a lot of great things we can build on uh, that I see just in the short time I've been engaged with the community here. And I look forward to that. I also look forward to my PowerPoint consistently staying <laughs> so Someday I have that vision. But so do I. <laughs> uh, I gotta go back. Can you go back a slide? Sorry. Yes. Please. So a little bit about some of the work. Uh, sorry, this is really text heavy, but the reality is I just want to talk about some of the things that I've been able to do the last seven years specifically, kind of the most relevant work, recent work. Uh, about 400 students, 200 brick and mortar students. Uh, I'm currently engaged with two sets of staff, so WPL and OHS. It's about 65 people all, all told that I work and, and lead and try to help manage and grow uh, in the organization. I manage and work with the WPL board as well as with the NOSD board, Northern Ozaki School District Board. I'm really proud of the work that we put together in developing relationships and having a long range plan. I've, I've been involved with strategic planning since 2017 with both organizations. Um, I value strategic planning and I value community input in strategic planning. So strategic planning is really a three to five year process of setting goals and articulating action steps to achieve those goals. And there's really four major buckets in our strategic plan that I have in my current situation, which is uh, a culture and climate bucket, which examines all those factors in the school district, a marketing and enrollment bucket, which really looks at how do we build revenues because we have to find ways to build, to get more students into our seats and, and build the community in a smart way. Uh, so curriculum instruction obviously is a bucket because we want to make sure we have the best curriculum instruction approaches we, we need for our students to achieve. And then of course, uh, multi-level systems and supports, MLSS is the fourth bucket. So those. Those buckets were formed as part of our strategic plan. And then we have stretch goals from three to five years as part of that plan. I would engage in that planning right away, come July, August, September. And then that plan is not one we set on a shelf. It's a plan that comes out often throughout the year. And we have those checkpoints along the year where the board's informed or the community's informed as to what we're working on within those buckets of work. 
Um, sometimes those buckets also engage community members in the work because again, it's it's these are our kids we're working with, and these are your kids that you're sending to school every single day. And so that's part of the strategic planning process for us as well that I would look forward to engaging with. Uh, I was able to work with our WVL staff to get us a, an improvement on the state report card. When I took over there, we were not meeting expectations. We were below expectations, and now we are meeting expectations, and even at a year where we exceeded expectations. So on the state report card for WVL, we've done a good job of getting our school to a spot where the quality is there to the state metrics. Um, there's still room to improve. Meeting expectations is okay. It's not good enough. And it's not good enough here because you're already above that. So the reality is the state report card here would be about understanding it, articulating it, celebrating it, and then improving it is the goal. And so trying to find ways to, to build uh, those assets for us within the community is really important. I am committed to a life of service. I, I want to be here. I applied. I want to engage the community. I want to be a part of things long term for the community. Uh, I feel like, you know, visibility and, and it only gets you so far. You have to be trusted. You have to be here for a while. You have to be willing to have difficult conversations and work through things that have gotten in the way, perhaps in the past. Um, being an outsider is maybe an advantage because I have a viewpoint from other places I've been. Um, and there's enough people who can hopefully tell me the history here of things to be able to work through some of those challenges that have been faced in recent history and even long-term history. So I'm looking forward to the commitment here. Um, I really tried hard. Uh, we had a recent referendum in my school district that unfortunately last week did not pass, but there's challenges with that. When you have a referendum that doesn't pass, how do you make decisions to move on from that? Or we've also passed a referendum for facilities in my time there that was huge for us in 2018. So where that looked like and how to help improve the community. So there's a possibility of our community having to look at that for future funding. I don't know what that what the future brings, but I do know that referendums do not they don't the referenda do not happen in a vacuum. It takes huge buy-in, planning, coordination, efforts, communication that is, is the people in this room and beyond that will be able to sell sell the, the message and tell what we're doing and how we're doing it with taxpayer dollars. So the reality is, if that's something we have to go to, um, then how do we tackle that together and, and get that message out there? If it's not something we need right away, then certainly, you know, what, what does that future forecast look like? What are we looking like right now financially? What are we looking like in three years, five years, ten years, if things remain unchanged? And then, of course, working with the board and state legislators to try and change if we have to, because the reality is, when 91 school districts go to referendum in the state of Wisconsin at the last election, which was last week, that's one out of four districts that are going to referendum. That's a system problem. So how can we work with our current parameters to enhance and improve that system at a legislative level, if need be? And that's part of the superintendent's role as well to impact that, if needed. So again, those are just some of the things that I put out there. I think that's sort of the end of my slide deck. Uh, oh, why? There you go. Uh, I did say at the end here, some days I feel like Henry, this is my little guy. Uh, we went to Dick's a couple of weeks ago, and he just slept in the car. I wish that someone would have pushed me around the place, but they weren't willing to. I got stared at when I climbed into the car. So sometimes I'm tired like Henry, but it's all worth it. And that's what I feel like with our work here in schools. It's tiring, but it's really meaningful. And at the end of the day, super cute like Henry. So thank you for letting me ramble on about myself. Um, any questions? Or um, I have a question for you. So. What is it about the Raymond School District that led you to apply to this position? And how do you, what do you feel you have to offer? That's a great question. You know, I, I, I'm an outsider, but I see great things here. I, I believe in small community-based schools. I believe in the Katie model. I believe that uh, the value comes from those relationships in a, in a small community uh, that you just don't necessarily get in bigger systems. Um, I have grown to love and appreciate, and I've been a part of systems of all sizes. Um, I had some time in Racine, Wauwatosa, Milwaukee, so bigger system in Waukesha. The reality is, for Donia, where I am now, which is very similar to here, is really where I see the biggest impact. And when you can have those conversations and things get done and people hold you accountable and you hold them accountable, and it's a small system that just has to find ways to communicate and, and, and grow. So to me, this opportunity was one that I carefully selected because uh, you're a community that seems to have the values that align with, with what I believe, that our kids can have great schools and need great schools. 
and they need small communities to get behind them to be able to, to move them forward. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you'll consider me for, for the role. Uh, I think my experiences, you know, in, in the K through 12 in a variety of ways, both in person and virtual, uh, would, would be worth, you know, examining and, and bringing into the conversation here because you never know how some of the things that I've learned in places I've been could have a positive impact here. Uh, but I also want to make sure that I listen and I, and I absorb the great things that are going on here and, and we kind of meet in the middle on those pieces. So to me, the, the small uh, is really what drove me to the interest. Uh, and of course, the K through eight, I'm, I'm an elementary teacher by heart. That's where I taught. And uh, I, I've been a, a principal at a lot of levels, but but really that's that's where my passion is in the K eight level. Uh, I do believe high schools are super important as well. And, and I, I've also been able to see that K through 12 progression. Uh, I, I, I'm graduating two different classes of seniors in about a month. I have two graduations, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. I feel like a dad of both families. And the reality is both of those sets of seniors, which is about 120 total combined, uh, 60 per class, they're going out into the real world. And those are kids that are gonna be graduating here in just, in just a month. And I take tremendous pride in growing our kids as, as assets in that bigger picture, you know, where they fit at Union Grove and other high schools they may go to uh, around the area here. So I'm looking forward to the possibility of getting to know the community better. Great, and I think you answered this, but I'll give you an opportunity if there's anything else you'd like to offer. And that is, how will you get to know the community? Uh, I, I think uh, being present, being available, putting myself out there, um, asking questions, trying to listen whenever possible. Uh, I think standing out front with a coffee cup is a start. Uh, finding a way to you know, welcome people here. Uh, going to community events, as I mentioned, I saw, they're not all of our baseball fields, but lots of baseball fields here, which hey, that's a great way to get out of the community and just see how, what kids are doing and how families are engaging. Um, going to local events. Um, I would love to host uh, an all community picnic. The last seven years of my life, I've had a corn roast and a, and a lot of burgers that we fried up, uh, grilled up prior to school starting. So a back to school picnic to welcome people back, open to the community because that's a way to get everybody in the doors, get them feeling like they're they're welcome to the school, they can talk with the school people. Uh, so finding ways to bridge the gap, uh, inviting you know people in for concerts, inviting the community in for, I mean, there's nothing better than a holiday concert, you know, to hear some kids singing songs and have community members that come to those things. Um, having eighth grade. I don't want to call it graduation because it's just the start of the rest of you know their schooling, but their 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 commencement, they're moving moving forward to high school, having that celebration be a community based thing. These are the these are the kids we're building for a whole generation here. We want to celebrate them and send them off. So inviting people to those meetings. I'm also using I think technology whenever possible like this when you're streaming things successfully or unsuccessfully, but finding ways to bring people in because we're trying. At least you're trying to have that word and that message out there as, as a, an effort to build that transparency. Excellent. Thank you very much. That is the questions we have for you this evening. Um, I want to thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Please uh, fill out your comment cards and if you leave them in the, on the back, you'll collect those and get those to the board. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.